Hello, I'm Tactical Pascal. Welcome to the channel. I hope this finds you all safe and well. This video is on the comparison between the F-18 and the F-16 in DCS World. As always, thank you very much for clicking on the video and for all the likes and subscriptions we've got so far. It's fantastic. Now, I'm making this video because there's a lot of comparisons that can be made between the F-16 and the F-18. And a lot of people don't know which module they want to buy. They want to buy one, but they don't know if they want to get the 18 or the 16. So this will cover the things you can do in their current builds. So straight away, I'll cover the fact that they are both single seat, all weather multi-role aircraft. With one major difference, the F-18 is carrier based. It can land on the carrier and it can land on land. Yes, the F-16 does have a tail hook, but that's used for rotary hydraulic arrestor gear in the event of an emergency on a runway, not to land on a carrier. It can't do that. I'll basically cover what each aircraft can currently do in DCS. So to start with air-to-air -air missiles, the M120 AMRAAM can be carried by both the F-16 and the F-18, as can the M9 Sidewinder. However, the M7, which can be carried by the Hornet, cannot be carried by the Viper or the Falcon, whichever you prefer to call the F-16. The AIM-7 is a semi-active radar homing missile, so once the pilot has locked onto the target and fires the missile, he needs to maintain radar contact with the target for that missile to guide. It's useful because you can fire into a furball as long as you've locked the enemy. If you fire an AMRAAM into the furball, that means that you might shoot down a friendly or an enemy. So the F-18 currently has the advantage in missiles. Continuing on with missiles, the F-18 can carry a lot more than the F-16. The F-16 maximum can carry four AMRAAMs and two uh, Sidewinders. That's a, a normal loadout for going into combat as cap. So that really gives you two, maybe three, depending on your missile performance when you fire. So two or three engagements, whereas the F-18 can double that with the amount of missiles it can carry. Now, air-to-ground capability. Both airframes in DCS can currently carry dumb bombs, so unguided munitions, as well as GPS-guided bombs and laser-guided bombs. However, the F-18 can carry rockets and Mavericks and walleyes, the TV-guided missiles. No one really uses them because you've got Mavericks, but currently the F-16 cannot carry Mavericks or rockets. A huge advantage the F-18 has is the air-to-ground radar that it has at the moment. The F-16 doesn't have it, again, the operative word, yet, but the F-18 does. It's only just been released, but it's there and it works. One role that is yet to come in for the F-16, but you have in the F-18, is SEED, or SEAD, however you wish to pronounce it, the suppression of enemy air defense. The F-18 can carry harm, AGM-88C missile, so high-speed anti-radiation missiles. The F-16 currently has nothing that can engage radars. It can drop a bomb on them, yes, but it doesn't carry any anti-radiation missiles. They're coming. How long that'll be is up to Eagle Dynamics. Both aircraft have the basics of navigation covered. Uh, the TACAN, etc., for finding tankers and finding airfields. That's all implemented in both aircraft. Uh, the F 18 has more with regards to its avionics because there are so many things missing in the F 16 currently. Um, yeah, it's not finished. It's usable online and it's usable uh, to learn the systems. But if you want to fly an F 16, really, you should be playing Falcon BMS at the moment. It will change. Endurance. Both aircraft are able to carry drop tanks. The F-18, as it's got two engines, is a lot thirstier than the F-16. So your endurance in the F-18 is probably just a little bit less than it is in the F-16. But both aren't fantastic on endurance like aircraft like the Tomcat, for example. But if you want to be airborne longer, you'll be in the F-16. But if you want to have more capability, you'll be in the F-18. And that ties us nicely to the flight model. Both aircraft are very, very easy to fly. The F-18 is much easier to land because essentially 
you slam into the ground. It's a controlled crash following that E-bracket down either onto the carrier or a runway. The F-16 takes a little bit more finesse when you're landing and you do some aero braking. That's where you use the bottom of the, uh, the body as a huge air brake as you're landing. So you're essentially wheeling down the runway. Both are easy to fly. I would say the F-18 feels just a bit better. The F-16 feels at the moment just a little bit arcadey. That's going to change with updates as the F-16 gets developed more and more. I've had both aircraft since they came out and I've got the Thrustmaster Warthog so I've got the F-16 stick as standard but I've also went and bought the F-18 add-on stick. Even with both of them and the more advanced features of the F-18 I still prefer flying the F-16. It's just better for me. It's not as capable, no way near as capable, but it's a lot more fun. The bubble canopy is amazing, especially when you're flying in VR. Um, the 16, yes, massively unfinished, but still a good module. F-18, excellent, getting towards where it needs to be, but as soon as harm comes in for the F-16, I don't think I'll be flying the F-18 much, if at all, really. If I want to land on a carrier, I'll go for the F-14. So that's it. That's the comparison between the F-16 and F-18, their current state in DCS. Like I've said, the F-18 is much more advanced as a module. The F-16 will get there eventually. If you want to enjoy the F-16 properly, go play Falcon BMS for now. I'd like to thank you all for watching and for your likes and subscribes. They really help the channel grow. That's it for now. Tactical Pascal, out!